tonight we will be conducting a school board meeting of the Mount Vernon School Board. Before we get started, I'll read through the checklist to ensure that the meeting that we are holding is in compliance with the right to know law. As chairperson of the Mount Vernon School Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04 and, and its extensions, that this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there's no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. In accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that number one, we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possible by video and other electronic means. We are utilizing Zoom for this electronic meeting. All members of the, of the board and staff have the ability to communicate contemporaneously in this meeting through this platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously watch and or listen to the meeting on Zoom and via phone by following the directions and links provided on our website, www.sau39.org. Second, we have provided public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. Third, we are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are any problems with access. If anyone has a problem, please email A Wallace, A W A L L A C E, at SAU39.org. Four, in the event that the public is unable to access the meeting, we will be adjourned and rescheduled. Five, please note that all votes taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. And finally, let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state where they are and if anyone else is in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. <clears throat> so let's start with Mr. Eckhoff. Uh, good evening, Peter Eckhoff, upstairs office alone. Thank you, Mr. St. Dennis. No, I am home alone. Thank you, Mr. O'Keefe. I am home and alone. And thank you, Mrs. Hinckley. I'm home and alone. Thank you, and I am home and alone. Um, okay, let's take a look. Thanks everyone for joining us, by the way. It's nice to see everyone's faces. I'm just gonna do the clickety click here on Zoom and see what we can look at. Um, I would like to offer a public comment time. This will be the first of two public comment times now that our meeting is open. So I'm just gonna look and see if there are any um, attendees who would like to speak. If you would like to speak, you can use the raise your hand feature in Zoom. Uh, and then we will acknowledge you uh, to unmute yourself and, and speak to the board if you'd like. There will also be a second uh, public comment time a little bit later in the in the meeting if you come up with any questions or comments that you'd like to to add. I'm not seeing any right now. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on to the consent agenda. Um, I know that there are a couple of items that um, that board members uh, would like to pull out. Um, so before we entertain a motion about the consent agenda, um, I would like to propose that we pull um, item number four, which is the Mount Vernon Village School early start times um, and the facilities updates so that we can have deeper discussion on that. Does any board member have anything else that they'd like to discuss in greater detail from the consent agenda? I'm not seeing anybody. Okay. Um, would you like to motion to uh, to accept the other items in the consent agenda, or do you want to just do it all at once, have a discussion, and then do it all at once? What's anyone's preference? I'd rather actually vote on some of those things separately, if that's okay. That's fine. So Stephen, would you like to make a motion then um, for the other consent agenda items? Well, I already scrolled down, so uh, bear with me just a moment. 
Um, so we are going to pull items number four and items number seven. So I make a motion to approve consent agenda item number one, two, three, um, five. Uh, let's hold off on number five. I'd like to pull that one too, if that's okay with you. Uh, mm -hmm. And number six. So one, two, three, and number six. Okay, do I have a second for that motion? Mrs. Hinckley, did you second? Yes. Okay, thank you. So let's just do a roll call vote on accepting consent agenda items one, two, three, um, and six. So Mr. Eckhoff? Eckhoff, yes. Mr. St. Dennis? St. Dennis, yes. Uh, Mr. O'Keefe? O'Keefe, yes. Mrs. Hinckley? Hinckley, yes. And Lawrence, yes, thank you. Um, so let's let's go ahead and uh, talk about, well, why don't we jump in with the early start times? I guess let's just do it in order, unless you'd like to talk about something else first. I Why not just take it as it is? Um, Dr. Sarpti, I thank you for being with us. I know that you had um, some information on this in your principal's report as well. Um, Yep, I, I just had one thing to add. If, is it okay if I add that now? Yeah, please, absolutely. Um, so one of the things that we talked about was just based on the fact that the start times will change for the middle and high school students, we do expect that there might be some need either before school or after school with regard to childcare. So that's something that we have certainly looked into. Um, we've contacted, well, Anna Parrell from Clark Wilkins and I have both contacted the Boys and Girls Club, the YMCA, um, New Mornings to make sure that we can provide care before and after school if that's necessary. Um, as long as we have enough participation, we can certainly offer, actually we can offer a, a, a multitude of options for families depending on what the needs are and what parents are looking for for their students. That's one thing I just didn't include in my short report there. Okay, and did you, um, did you want to just walk us through what the changes would be so that we're hearing it straight from you rather than me reading it off? Sure. I, Mr. Steele, did you want to jump in or I saw your hand up? I just didn't want to. Just waving hello that after five hours, my internet has been restored. Okay. All righty. Um, so, the yes. The world makes sense to me once again. <laughs> um, so absolutely. So the the start times haven't changed that much. Um, our previous our previous schedule, um, our actual start time, has well our, our current start time I should say is eight thirty five. Under the proposed earlier start, our start time will be eight o'clock. So we're talking about a thirty five minute difference. Um, when it comes to dropping students off in the morning, we have like a we have a short window of time when students can start getting dropped off. They can get settled, and so that'll just be um, again that'll be thirty five minutes earlier than it than it typically is now. And then um, with regard to our to our dismissal time, we're looking at 35 minutes later. So right now our dismissal time is 315 and we're looking at a dismissal time of 240. Um, I, certainly some of the benefits I would say um, have to do with taking advantage of daylight hours for our younger kids when they wanna go outside, especially during the winter months when those daylight hours are, are shortened. Um, and then again, being able to accommodate the changes at the middle and the high school as well. Um, the other thing I also would say is that we have some parents who have expressed um, just some difficulty around getting their kids to after school sports. Like we have a lot of students who, who engage in dance and karate and different things like that. So this would allow for a little bit more time between when school ends and when they're gonna be able to bring their kids to those activities. So those are just some of the benefits of the earlier start time and then the earlier dismissal time. Thank you. Um, what about busing in the morning? I, I know that there is some concern about what time the bus routes would start. Yeah, so I, I'll be honest about that. That I'm, I, we certainly would have to figure that out um, with our busing company. I, I don't know how much earlier the buses would need to would need to go out. I mean, I would guess that if the buses went out 35 minutes earlier, it would accommodate the schedule. But I also don't. I'm not qualified to make that just that determination. Um, Superintendent Steele, do you know that answer? 
Uh, I know that the bus company is fully aware of our new schedule and is working that out to make sure that they roll on time. Um, but the final uh, schedules won't be done until we have um, a firm start plan for next year. But the bus company is confident they can get uh, our kids there where they need to go on time. So short answer is no, I don't have the answer, but I'm confident we will have one. Okay, uh, Mr. O'Keefe, I see your hand raised. Yeah, so uh, Dr. Sarfati, thank you very much for uh, reaching out to those entities. What were some of your findings in terms of the types of support we're gonna be able to offer our students uh, in the fall if we actually are starting to let out you know, 35 minutes earlier? So I know Hampshire Hills uh, clearly isn't gonna be an issue. Boys and Girls Club, they all provide their own transportation. Um, in the past, I know we've, or I specifically have asked uh, the district if we could do a joint system or program uh, at the new morning program at the Clark Wilkins School, if we provide a transportation, one of our bus routes. And in the past that was rejected due to inner district transportation and making a stop in another town and putting the, the stops on that. What types of feedback, number one, did you get from those folks that you checked in with, other than if enough people participate and uh, we can make a program go? And then number two, what's the feedback been from uh, the faculty and staff at the school in terms of the changes to the start times? Yeah, um, so so I will tell you that I did work with our union president on the start times just to make sure that we were fulfilling all of our contractual ob obligations. Um, I know that she has I know that she has talked about this with our staff. Um, as far as 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 far as what the feedback that I've gotten from the staff, I mean it's actually overwhelmingly positive because we end our day a lot earlier. <laughs> and so people are thinking about all the things that they can do, um, you know, that they can do kind of on the other end after after school is done. Um, I haven't heard any negative feedback from staff at all. If there is negative feedback out there, I, I haven't heard it. Um, with regard to new mornings, actually, instead of having to provide transportation, I, if I'm hearing you correctly, for our kids to go over to Clark Wilkins, I've actually reached out to them and they're willing to send somebody right to our school. So so their program time at our school in the NPR would start at 7 a.m. and that would go until the school bell. Um, the daily rate would be 60, uh, not 60, nope, that would be a lot, that'd be really high. The daily rate would be six dollars a day and that includes all kinds of, um, you know, fun crafts, game times, and various activities that they, that they offer. There also is an after school program that New Mornings would be willing to um, to provide at our school as long as we have you know, enough participating students. Um, and that after school time would go from our right at dismissal until 6 p.m., depending on what parents need. And um, the activities include crafts, gym games, a lot of STEAM activities, also community service, which is pretty, it's pretty great. Um, so in addition to New Mornings offering those services right at our school, I also reached out to the Y in Nashua and the Y actually would provide transportation for our students as well. And they have, you know, they have abundance of um, an abundance of activities that kids could participate in as well, like you said, as the Boys and Girls Club in Milford. And then um, Hampshire Hills is actually the one place that I haven't heard back from yet, but I, I do know that, you know, I, I do know that there is that there is a lot of um, that there's a strong relationship between our schools and Hampshire Hills, so I assume that they would be able to to work with us as well. Thank you. If I might ask one just follow up, please. Uh, in addition to the fact that the staff, any parents reach out to you with concerns other than the support and extracurricular stuff? Honestly, I haven't heard anything from parents at all. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I do have one parent letter that uh, that would need to be entered into correspondence. Um, I can share that now if I can click myself over. So this is uh, the board received correspondence from Kim Wyberney. Um, addressing the board, looking for clarification. Um, yeah, looking for clarification about the the issues that we were talking about. So um, the questions that that were asked is, you know, is this a is this a quote unquote done deal? Um, you know, what exactly are the new proposed times? Um, I think we've we've just covered that. 
Uh, I'm just reading the bullet points. Um, there was a question about the last time that individuals were surveyed about their interest in the time change. Um, I do know that we, we have that information. I can provide that. Um, there have been several, several surveys that have gone out over the last few years. Uh, I believe that, you know, the majority of the work began in 2018, but someone can quote me on that. Um, Mr. O'Keefe, I think you had that present too, if you want to grab me that date if possible. If not, I can grab it from the email. Sure, I, I didn't reply to her. Um, let me just uh, Questions about the focus on Sauhegan are also included in here. Uh, is the decision primarily being driven by the Sauhegan schedule um, and referencing, are the decisions being referenced more towards the Sauhegan uh, students? What about the other schools in the SAU? Um, were other staff members polled? Uh, were, other, were the other elementary schools um, also taken into uh, into account how does it affect their schedule um, some question about the flex period at Sohegan high school that would happen at three o'clock i think that might be better answered by the Sohegan board or potentially um, superintendent Steele if you wanted to cover that um, also questions about um, after school if there are uh, if there are older students that are leaving the high school after the younger students what happens for child care Dr. Sarfti, I think you uh, you answered um, what the Mont Vernon Village Schools response would be in terms of that providing uh, you know providing opportunities for for care before and after school there's a question about clubs being held at the school um, there's a community council question which is appropriate for the high school level um, a question asking if the students are in favor of this, if they've been surveyed. Um, a question about uh, minutes based versus the days based system and would there be an option to have shorter days with an extension of the school year. Uh, I've heard that from several community members as well, uh, besides just this this letter. So I'm so happy. Go I ahead. do have a timeline if I can uh, share that, Madam Chairwoman, for uh, our, yeah. our newer board members' benefits. So they got some background. I did not uh, forward this off to to everyone. Yeah, and please do. Sure we Thank didn't you. violate our, our board policy about communication. Um, yeah. Basically, make a long story short, we uh, we had a parent presentation, I believe it was in 2017, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, was requesting that we start the process of researching this, this particular issue at the SAU level. The SAU school board then founded and created a subcommittee uh, for delayed or uh, changing our start times for our school. Over the course of 2017, 2018, they met on a rather frequent basis with our superintendent and various community members serving the community. And they presented a uh, proposal and a uh, result uh, or a presentation to the SAU school board on October 2nd. After that presentation, the SAU school board uh, voted to move forward with the next steps in the process, uh, the implementation side. How uh, how do we do that? How does it impact our overall district? Uh, and then in January of 2019, um, the SAU board received an update from that particular committee. Um, bear with me just a moment. Sorry, guys, my phone rang. Uh, uh, we received an update from uh, that particular committee, uh, and uh, the SAU school board then voted to instruct our school district administration to um, move forward with the actual presentation. Uh, and then by doing so, uh, we were ready to, uh, to, to, to actually change our school start times. Uh, and we asked for the logistical report to come back no longer than November of 2019. October 22nd, 2019, the superintendent made a presentation uh, with the logistics and the board voted to implement the start time. Um, at the time, we wanted it to start it for the 2020-2021 school year. Um, but uh, based on uh, board member feedback, we opted to delay it to two years uh, to go to 2021 to 2022 school year, which is the next school year. Uh, in November of this year, the superintendent presented uh, the start times, uh, and we took a vote to actually set the new school start times, uh, where it was adopted with an amended motion to, again, rework some of the logistics based on some of the concerns that our high school uh, counterparts were raising. Uh, and that presentation is scheduled to be made at our February SAU school board meeting uh, at the SAU. Um, so that, just to give everyone sort of some background to that, it's something that's been studied now for almost four years uh, with a lot of in-depth analysis, work with some of our board members uh, and our counterparts. And uh, we're at the point now where we are getting ready to implement. 
Thank you for the timeline. I do want to say also that the Amherst School Board is going to be discussing this at their meeting next week. I think it's on Monday. Um, and the uh, Sohegan School Board, I believe, is discussing it at their meeting on the 15th. Um, I think that those are the dates. So if there are community members who are interested in hearing those boards uh, take on the issue and, and the impact that it would have on their schools and students at those levels, um, definitely please tune into those meetings. You'll find all of the information for that on the SAU website, if that's something that's, that interests you. Uh, but as Mr. O'Keefe mentioned, um, I would expect that it'll be discussed also at the next SAU board meeting, um, just for you know coordination, alignment, all of those things. Um, and that and that uh, you would hear a deeper discussion there as well. But just so that uh, the community understands that this is not like a very quick decision. Um, you know, this is something that has been um, that the wheels have been turning for several years. There's been a lot of investigation that's gone into it uh, and uh, certainly not something that's been taken lightly. Um, and there's been a lot of opportunity for uh, for community input, for staff input. Um, as Dr. Sarkdi said, from the uh, village school perspective, um, we're able to, to comment on that. We certainly can't comment on um, you know, the, the staff involvement in the other schools, but from our school perspective, um, it sounds like, like people were consulted uh, and the, the, the feedback is, is positive. Um, Dr. Sarkdi, do you know if the, if the kids were asked? I mean, that was one question in that, in that email that I, we didn't hear about where the kids asked about start times. Do they have a feeling on it one way or the other? Do you know? Um, so I, I, I can't comment on that. I'm not sure if that was, if that happened in the past. Um, I just, I will say that from my end, I, I know that this is a proposal. And so I wanted to be careful about making sure that I didn't send the message that this was a definite thing that was happening. Cause I, I really wasn't sure. Thank you. Um, Superintendent Steele, do you want to jump in for a minute and just um, maybe comment on the coordination of this process and you know what each of the boards is is doing right now and and what the next step would be so that the community gets a feel for the bigger picture and how things are in play? Can you comment on that? Sure. So uh, the the thing that ties us all together as one district is really our buses um, and the fact that to have one uh, set of buses requires that the districts coordinate their activities. That's that that's critical, not only for families as well, uh, that want common schedules for their kids that are in, in different schools or at least coordinated schedules. Um, so the process uh, was was uh, was well detailed by uh, Mr. O'Keefe, and uh, it's been a multi-year process to get uh, to the point where we're at now. Um, and where we're at now, from my perspective, is the SAU board has acted to adopt this. A uh, new set of schedules, and uh, the principals are each presenting their detailed plans at their specific board level. Um, and so, uh, once every board has the opportunity to review those plans, uh, the most notable ones being the AMS and Sohegan proposals, because those are the ones that are are uh, most different from uh, the current schedule. Um, then we'll be ready to go. So uh, each board will in turn adopt um, the new schedule, and it'll be coordinated as a result of being discussed at the SAU board, detailed discussions at the individual board levels as Dr. Sarfti did earlier th uh, this evening. Um, and then we uh, move forward with uh, implementing the new change. Thank you. Do any board members have any questions for the superintendent or for Dr. Sarfti? I mean, I, I think from, um, from the board perspective, what we looked at and the pieces that we had looked to make sure were in, in place um, and reviewed, I, I feel as though you, you've done a good job reviewing those. Um, the one piece that I think is a little bit of a wild card for me would be that busing piece. If there was any impact to busing that might impact our budget, um, you know, if, if there's busing needs that we're not aware of, I think that would be something that might uh, sway the board's, uh, the board's I want to say approval of, of this uh, plan, but that's one thing that we need to be aware of is that if it was going to cause a huge um, impact to the budget, that might be a, a, a hard stop. I'm looking to board members to see if you have any other discussion on this one or comfort level. No. Mr. Eckhoff, how are you feeling on it? Um, honestly, I'm not 100% sold and I I can't give you a, a detailed list of reasons why. I think I was possibly the only lone dissenter when the vote was taken on a previous vote at the SAU board meeting. 
Um, it just seems like there's a lot of things. Um, I get the, the science and the studies, <clears throat> pardon me. It just seems like there's a lot of uh, family logistics, uh, sporting logistics, um, scheduling logistics that um, I'm not sure about. I have not done a deep dive on this whole project. Um, it started, I think, the year before I was put on the board. Um, I just, I, again, I, it just my gut tells me that I'm not sure it's a home run, um, but I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm out and way out in the bleachers on this one. Um, but I don't want to surprise anybody when the, the vote's taken, but I'll probably stay with my no vote. But I know there's been a lot of research done, a lot of studies, uh, a lot of panelist discussions, and um, everybody's done their, pardon the pun, done their homework on this, but um, I'm not 100% in. Okay. What's everyone's feeling about the logistics of it? I mean, does anyone feel like there are any outstanding questions that you would have for Dr. Sarti or the superintendent about the logistics? And I'm talking specifically within the framework of the village school right now. I mean, I know that we're looking at the overall districts as a whole, but I would also just ask that we stay focused on our school at this time to make sure that, you know, if there's anything, any pieces that feel like they're missing, this would be the time to let Dr. Sarti and the superintendent know that you know, we might be on the fence about something. Uh, Mr. O'Keefe? Yeah, so I, I just wanna pipe in, in terms of where uh, I perceive my purview being in terms of uh, the town of Mount Vernon and the school district in which we uh, we were elected to, uh, to to support, represent and oversee. Um, I do believe that this is in the best interest of our kids, uh, specifically at the village school. Uh, I believe that this is a plan that uh, I think can easily be adopted with uh, minimal impact on the community. I believe that if we offer uh, the proper resources to our community uh, to help absorb some of the anxiety in September and October, uh, I think this is something that uh, is, is gonna be well served to, to, to our kids uh, and, and creating the educational environment specifically for our middle school kids that we're also charged with overseeing, um, creating a better experience for them. I do believe that uh, the public from a communication standpoint, I think there's a disconnect in terms of the why and I think that's a direct result of us delaying this over and over and over again and pushing it out another year and then not discussing or talking about it. Um, when the science was presented to our board, we, of the exception of one person, um, were all in support of it because we saw the benefits and the benefits definitely outweighed uh, the, the cons. And the problem now is, is that the cons um, are, are now coming to the surface. Uh, for some folks and that anxiety based on the situation that we find ourselves in today uh, is actually magnifying those cons and we're forgetting about the benefits. So from my perspective, I do support the school start, school start time change for the village school. And I also support it for our middle school kids because I do believe it's in the best interest of our kiddos. Thank you, Mr. O'Keefe. Mr. St. Dennis, I see your hands raised. Yeah, um, I'll echo what you said, Stephen, uh, being in education and seeing how times of day affect child's acquisition and understanding um, and all the data has, has been already laid out over the past few years of the younger ones are up earlier and rearing to go. The older ones are up later. Um, doesn't need to be repeated. It, it is all out there, but just speaking firsthand and seeing what a high school kid's mental capacity is at 7.30 in the morning versus 9.30 in the morning, it's night and day. And when you look at the little ones, speaking of my own here, she's up and ready to go at six, ready to learn, trying to figure out what to do. And we don't know what to do this, do that, go read this. And she's ready to go. And, and with that energy going in early, does give them more in the afternoon. Um, right, in a perfect world, no issues ever, right? But yeah, there's sports and there's activities, but I think our goal, both as a community, as a board, and as an educational system, needs to be what's best educationally for these children. And I think it is going to provide them more opportunities later into the afternoon for either enrichment, for more extracurricular, or for more of what they like to do outside of school while still placing the primary emphasis on their education to allow them to learn as best they can. And they won't be as tired in the afternoon when they're still learning. 
Thank you. Thank you both for your comments. I would echo the same thing. Um, I do think that it is the right move educationally for our kids in Mount Vernon and for our, our, uh, our middle school kids, certainly our high schoolers um, seem to do better on that schedule. I've got one that definitely does. Um, my concern would be the, the end times um, and making sure that those are aligned, uh, not only for uh, for student uh, coordination, um, but also because kids need to be kids in the afternoon. You know, we talk about daylight hours for our little ones. I think we need to make sure that as our kids go through that they've got enough daylight hours, um, you know, uh, in, in the high school as well. So that would be my comment as far as the overall experience, but I, I'm behind it. I think that, that you've done a good job of putting together uh, the coordination aspect. Um, and like I said, that wild card to me is just the the timing on the busing and making sure that that's all coordinated and it doesn't add any additional expense because I think that would be uh, very difficult for our town to absorb. Mrs. Hinckley, did you have anything that you wanted to, to add? No, I mean, without echoing what everyone else has said, I mean, I think I'm very much on board um, mm -hmm. with the change in time, having both an elementary school student and a middle school student. Um, I can see the way that it, the timing impacts them. So um, I think overall, it's, it will be a, a positive change for our kids. Thank you. Um, Superintendent Steele, did you need anything specific from us this evening other than our discussion and? No, uh, this is one of the, the joyous occasions of coordinating between three, maybe four boards. And so uh, really what I need this evening from you folks is, our, with what we presented tonight, are you on on board so far? Because then we're gonna to go to the other two boards and have the same conversation, the discussion at the SAU level. So at this point, we're looking for objections. Um, and if there are none, then um, then what I need to, to understand is that the Mount Vernon School Board is wholly in favor of this as proposed and uh, we'll support it if it becomes the final, uh, the final plan. Okay, thank you. Mr. O'Keefe, did you have something? Yeah. yeah, the only thing I wanted to add to that is I actually fully support what the superintendents did. The only additional comment that I would wanna add is, is as long as we as a district uh, provide resources to folks specifically in the fall of next year to help ease them into this calendar, uh, specifically with aftercare. I know it's not our obligation to provide aftercare, but at least provide resources for local um, uh, entities or agencies that can actually do so. Uh, and to be honest with you, I'm really excited about possibly our intramural program starting up next year when COVID ends and really having that impactful and widely attended uh, and using some of the stipend funds that we budgeted for that uh, and seeing that stuff really, really start to take off. So I'm excited about the opportunities, specifically with the earlier state times at our village school. I just wanna make sure that the support's there for our community. Thank you. Um, I do, I do want to take a moment and just open up public comment in case there are any members of the public that wanted to speak specifically to this issue because I know it's been um, a hot issue. So uh, I'm just going to add a public comment time if the board agrees and there's no objection to doing that at this point. Okay, I'm not seeing any objection. Thank you. So if, if any members of the public who are present wanted to comment um, about the, the start time issue, we would be happy to entertain that right now. I don't see many members of the public, but I thank those that are here. <laughs> okay, I'm not seeing anybody. So um, thanks for that. And thank you board members for entertaining that as an option, just in case we appreciate it. Uh, so do we wanna go ahead and, and make a motion to accept consent agenda item number four at this point in time, which would be the early start times? Mr. O'Keefe? I make a motion to accept consent agenda item number four and add the comment that we support the superintendent's proposed start times. Thank you. Do I have a second for that motion? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. St. Dennis. A roll call vote, Mr. Eckhoff. Eckhoff, no. Thank you, Mr. St. Dennis. St. Dennis, yes. Mr. O'Keefe? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Hinckley? Hinckley, yes. And Lawrence, yes. Thank you. So that's um, four for it and one uh, against it. Um, let's go ahead and uh, talk about, which was it that we pulled? Number five, which is, uh, was it the capital reserve fund or the? Yeah, so the, if I may, Madam Chairman, my concerns actually surround both and they, how they intertwine. So that's why I wanted to. So five and seven? Yes. Five and seven, okay. 
Um, do you want uh, Mr. O'Keefe then to uh, talk about what your what your concerns are? Because I know Mr. Preston is here and he may be able to also help answer some issues with the facilities update. Yeah, so it's not that there is a concern, Mr. Preston. I was hoping that you could just spend some time. I read your report. I read the uh, uh, the proposal. What I want you to do is, if it's possible, just talk to number one uh, for the community's benefit, because uh, this is going to go up uh, and, and be posted so people can watch it back. Talk to you how we got to where we are, why now, um, the three quotes, how we sent it out for a bid. These are the results that actually came back. Uh, and if, if this is something that can be delayed or uh, it has to be done in 2021, uh, or can we do half now, half next year, um, talk a little bit about the process and then more importantly, how the capital reserve fund sort of uh, pays for, uh, for, for the repairs and the corrections that need to be made. Well, thanks, Steve. Um, so in December, the facilities update for December, we, we went out to, to bid um, for a roof um, and what we did for that is we reached out to a consultant, ARM consultant, and we came up with um, a roof specification and design on how we're going to take the roof apart and how we're actually going to put the roof back together. And what other, um, and we're also going to add some items that actually benefit the roof as well. So we came up with a design, we worked with the consultant, um, we actually sent this out to three bidders and we opened it up to the public because um, we wanted to make sure that the, the individuals that we had bidding on here were had a good reputation of giving us a good roof. Um, so we went out to bid. We, we had um, a roof bid walk through on the 8th of December, um, and we walked the entire site so that the actual bidders could see everything, what the actual site looked like, and we reviewed any questions that came up for the specifications. Um, then we did receive these bids back on the 18th. Um, the three bidders that did submit proposals were the three bidders on the site walkthrough. Um, we then went through all specifications of the bid to make sure that um, we were meeting the need of the specification and, and really selected a, a, the vendor that would benefit the roof and come up with um, really the end product that we're all looking for. Um, we provided that um, specification actually last night. We've been working with the vendor and provided some new information um, on the final bid product for the low bidder. Um, but as far as the detail, the detail that we came up with with the roofing engineer, it's, it's a specific um, design that calls out all aspects of the roof, how we're going to take it apart, how we're going to put the um, valleys back together. We have certain specifications that call up for mock-ups, just meaning that we didn't come up with just um, a type of metal detail to go in the valleys. We're actually going to make sure that that mock-up meets the need of the valleys and can be reviewed, just making sure that we're reviewing the, the specification as it's built for us. Um, we're also adding some gutters in certain areas as well. There's um, certain points on where we did the transitions. If, if you look at where the additions were done um, in the past, you can actually see there, there's actually two points where you can see just where it's wavy, where you can see the two additions put together. We're actually going to correct that by removing some of the pot plywood, staggering it so that is not visible anymore. Um, we also found in the specification that the last time that the roof was done, the venting was actually not removed. So in the design detail of the specifications, there's a bunch of pictures that show our existing conditions. One of the reasons that we found that the roof is not breathing is that they just actually laid um, the underlayment under the siding over the existing. So our roof actually is, is not breathing up the eaves. We're removing all of that and putting the proper certainty back on the roofing so that we're not having that issue happen again. Um, it's a 40 year shingle or equivalent that we're approving. Um, the metals that we're calling out, we're calling out red copper in the valleys. Um, and we also included in here um, that we have unit pricing just for specific parts of the roof. Um, we want to account for as we take this roof off, do we have, is our plywood okay? Is everything need to be replaced? We want to make sure that we're not coming back to you guys and saying, hey, we found this. So we do have certain unit pricing already included in the bid base price that if those, obviously, if we're not using that money, those funds could be returned to us and, and lower the cost of the bid as well. That really won't be determined until we go all the way through through the roof. 
Thank you, Mr. Preston. Um, Superintendent Steele, I just wanted to give you the chance to, to jump in and uh, contextualize it as we're forming this discussion. And thank you for the great question, Mr. O'Keefe. Sure, thank you. And uh, I wanna make sure Mr. O'Keefe's questions were answered as well. But um, the, uh, um, I also had a chance today to uh, run um, the bid and the results by um, uh, the Mount Vernon building inspector. I thought uh, given that this was such a uh, public issue and there's been issues in the past, it might make sense to bring them on board um, early in the process. Um, they had uh, six questions uh, that they wanted answered. Um, and I wanna share those publicly, just, just make sure the show the, the due diligence that we're, we're uh, undertaking. So number one, confirm that they're removing all of the existing roofing, the answer is yes. Number two, are they using ice and water shield all the way up, uh, all the way up um, and the answer is yes. How many courses of ice and water shield are included in the bid? Uh, Roger, I think the answer is two, is that right? Two. Uh, four, what are they doing in the valleys? Open valleys like a metal, if so, what specific type? Um, so it's an open valley with uh, copper as the material that they're using. Um, what's going on with the venting? Uh, is there existing ridge vent? I think Roger uh, spoke about that a second ago. And then what shingle product are they using? And are, using the, are they using the proper underlayment for the shingle warranty? So the answer uh, is yes. And we're, uh, we're using um, what's called 40 year certaintied landmark pro two piece laminated asphalt shingles or equivalent. Um, so, and I don't know what most of those words mean by the way. Uh, so uh, um, I've also forwarded those answers along to the, our, the building inspector and we will continue to engage with them to make sure that the project is done well. Part of the issue is that when you get three bids and one is uh, so far uh, lower than the other two we want to make sure that we've, we've de-scoped the bid um, and that we're holding them to a really tight contract and to our specification. Um, the work Roger did by hiring someone to, to um, uh, develop the specification helps us quite a bit in that regard because our contract will include the spec, the RFP, and, um, all, and their bid so that we'll have no confusion about what is required of them. So thanks for letting me uh, share, share that. Thank you very much. Mr. O'Keefe, back to you just to make sure that those questions got answered. Yeah, so the superintendent brought up literally the, the next point I wanted to raise was just the huge difference between uh, the top bidder and the, the actually the middle bidder and the one that uh, is being presented for us to approve. Um, it's rather sizable. So uh, are the materials, the, the construct, uh, are they up to par? I know you just said that you're, you're in the process of vetting that or have vetted that. Are there any concerns that you see with regards to uh, uh, the one that uh, you're proposing? One, uh, I'll let Roger answer as well, but uh, something that we do that's, it's, it is required in New Hampshire, but we, a lot of school districts don't actually follow the requirement. Uh, we're having a bid, uh, a bid bond and a performance bond uh, um, provided by this bidder. Um, and we, we, do, we would do that with any large project just to make sure that we don't get stuck in a, in a bad situation with half a roof in the middle of a summer and a bidder that doesn't uh, complete the job. But in this case in particular, uh, given the, the, the disparity in the bids, uh, it's particularly important. So, um, and, and frankly, um, I was the, the bidder that we're recommending uh, balked at the cost of the, the bid bond. And that actually is reassuring to me because that tells me that their number was very close. If they, if they knew what the bid bond cost and were able to, uh, and were able to absorb it easily, then I think I would think their number was too high. So um, in a way that reassures me. Uh, thank you. Uh, Roger, did you see the note from, uh, from Peter King to the panelists? Pete uh, was a board member for years, so he provided some historical information there. Did you see that? That the, uh, the prior to the last re-roofing, the ventilation was redesigned by Barker Architects, an HVAC contractor um, with the last name of Dave from New Ipswich, he thinks, uh, and it replaced, it was replaced to include the turbine vents and the soffits were replaced just as an, as an FYI. Thank you, Mr. King, for the historical context, by the way. You're a gem. We appreciate you. Um, do any other board members have any questions? Uh, any other questions for Mr. Preston about those bids? Or Mr. O'Keefe, did your questions get answered in a satisfactory well, one way? One last follow-up. In terms of the timeline, what are we looking at, Roger, for that? Are we looking at starting this project this summer, finishing by September? Are we going to phase it in over two years? What does that look like? Um, we called it actually 
I'm unmuted. That's awesome. We we called it out um, for to be completed July 1st through August 20th. Um, we wanted to make sure that it was done um, certainly in time before school. So, is is there any concern with the um, I won't say lack, but the delay in materials all over the place that that won't be hit? We've actually been um, keeping in touch with the bidder and our consultant and the materials are available right down to um, the copper we've been checking on as well. Thank you, Mr. Eckhoff, I see your hands up. Yeah, I follow up to Steve's question on a timeline. It, it, and I don't have it in front of me, but I think we're, this is like two years in, ahead of when we were planning on doing the roof. So I guess my question is, are we at a, a, a point, and I'm not saying we need to wait to have 27 buckets, you know, strewn around the inside of the building, but are we, are we rushing into this? Whereas if we waited and, and followed our financial plan that we'd be okay for another year or two, or, or are there issues that are creeping in? I guess that's a Roger question. So I, I showed for the 10 year plan, this is being proposed as FY22, which ideally July 1st would be FY22 for us. So I think we're right on track. Um, and then the question is ideally, can it be wait one or two years? And I will say that the roof is not leaking now, so that's great. But I've also been in buildings where I've been on the roof squeegeeing off water as well and because the roof is leaking. so. That's a, that's a tough question and really a board question. And I would say if we're, we're saving one to two years, um, I, I don't know. I feel that I feel good about where we are number wise. I, I think that the, the benefits here now, um, in my opinion. Well, Roger, what's, what's your opinion of the condition of the roof from what you've seen and, and when you've been up there looking at it? Well, the maintenance side that we addressed was certainly the worst part of it, but um, we are showing signs of shingles being removed. The, the, the actual laminate on the shingle itself is, is being removed as well. I would say, I would, I would say certainly that it's time if, if not, we're asking for trouble in my opinion. If it was your house, would you do it? Yes, I would. Cause I like the number where we're at now. And I like the specification that we're choosing. Um, we're, we're calling out for certain materials that can't be changed or equivalent. So, I mean, we have a good design, we have a good number and a good roofer and a good consultant with us. So I feel definitely confident on this. If I could follow up real quick, and these may have already been answered previously. So I apologize, Roger and board if they have, but one, does, has this outfit done other schools? And do we know that they're happy with the, the, the end game and the product? And two, um, did we ever look at metal? And is there a reason what is metal not something we should consider or did we or and I'm just curious, I, I don't know the answer to that. The, um, to, those are great questions. Um, the consultants have worked with many schools. Um, this this um, consultant has actually been known to go to schools and, and help them get on the right path for where other roofers or consultants have not helped those individuals. I personally have used this consultant in my past district. Um, we took off two roofs, um, one almost 75% of middle school and about 40% of our center school. Um, sleeping without roofs on is, is not something that you're able to do, but um, we were able to bring it home and they did a wonderful job and, and exactly why I, I thought of bringing them here for us. Um, and then as far as metal, um, metal, I did consider it, but I, I'm not sure that that's a great option for us up there, only because we know metal roofs are, they, they remove the snow load. And we have a lot of exterior doors and windows right there. And my concern would be is where we'd be dropping all of that snow load on, on those areas. Um, with a shingled, shingled roof, we're, we're getting a slower melt and um, we're, we're not having those safety concerns. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. O'Keefe. One last question for me. So the capital reserve fund has, uh, according to consent agenda item number five, 311,000. And at the price point, we are gonna have enough inside that bucket 
uh, to move on potentially with our second project on Adam's list. Adam, I hate to put you on the spot. Do you have what that project was? Was it the wall? Was it uh, the fire alarm or? Yeah, so the, the, the next thing coming down the pike, and I'll pull it up to be sure, uh, is um, uh, was the HVAC upgrades uh, in classrooms, I believe, but I'll pull that up and verify. But I was going to bring up with the board um, a conversation about uh, our solar plans as well, because knowing that we were going to be seeing somebody here, we could either move on to the next project or have a conversation about solar or it's financing it and paying interest on, on a financing plan through a, a rate where we potentially uh, funded ourselves through some of the savings. So I wanted to ask the board after we got through the roof piece to have that conversation about what we do, if anything, with the extra. But let me pull up the facilities plan and stop talking for a second. Yeah, so I know Mr. Eckhoff brought up last time that uh, solar probably would not be a viable option for us. I thought that uh, was the finding there because the way the school faces. And I think the last thing we had... I think, I think the last time we had the full solar report to the board, like from a solar consultant, that they said the same thing, that it likely would not save us any money long-term. Right, so I'm a little me. surprised to hear solar. Forgive me for missing that. Roger, is that your understanding as well? I, I read the report as roof mounting solar was not a viable option because of our roof line facing north. Um, that was the way that that consultant was considering looking at it there. I, on the other hand, haven't had a chance to really consider it, but I'm more of a ped pedestal mount guy. And although maybe that portion of the roof, and I forget, Peter, if it was what, if we're, which, which direction we're trying to face, but um, there you go. Um, definitely, I was thinking more pedestals. Rather, I know we were considering roofs, but I think maybe if we can consider pedestal mounts up there, that it still may be an option for us. Yeah, that was the, the recommendation. And, and yes, the, the roof line is, is facing the wrong direction for roof mounted, according to him, and it would, it would not provide any financial benefit. It would make us feel warm and fuzzy because we're using solar power, but we wouldn't save any money. The suggestion from Patrick was, to your point, pedestal out in the field somehow, if there was you know, an area where we could do that, that that would be the best option is to utilize field space to provide solar panels, but roof mount wasn't an option. It, not a good option. So, and here is the, the, the long range facilities plan, um, which ventilation uh, in classrooms was the next, the next thing. That number is quite a few years old. I'm not even sure if it's accurate any longer, but we had targeted that for around fiscal year 25 and then we added a playground to the discussion last year and then a fire alarm system upgrade for well into the future. Um, the fire sprinkler system can kind of be eliminated because uh, if you remember, we had a fire protection engineer provide us a report that as long as we maintain the exterior doors from every classroom, we won't need to uh, add a fire sprinkler system to the building um, as long as we do that and don't provide any significant renovations or addition uh, to the building that would trigger us needing to be under current. Uh, current code. So that's the plan. Great. Uh, I, I, if I may, Madam Chairwoman, I absolutely fully support uh, the bid and I'm going to vote accordingly. Um, the only thing I would ask is, is maybe in light of the COVID situation, uh, our findings from our report back in September or August about our ventilation system, if we can somehow accelerate some of that stuff, knowing that the roof is phenomenally lower than where we were anticipating it would be, that we could potentially use roughly the $101,000 that's in there and do a, a two or three year, maybe gradual replacement of our ventilation systems in our classrooms, maybe start off in the older wing, you know, the, the first grade, the second grade, the third grade, and then migrate up uh, to the newer parts of the building. Maybe do that over the course of a couple of years with uh, the community support of an additional 50,000 of unreserved uh, uh, balances going into the cap reserve fund to finish project in year two or year three. I think that's just a good start or a good step. I don't know what your thoughts on that, Roger, would be. Is that even possible? What the cost associated with that would be? I think that's a great idea. And I really like um, the phasing of it um, only because it's, it's a beautiful attic up there, but all of the catwalk are actually built around the existing duck, uh, duck board. So not as it only removing the duckboard, but it's also disassembling the catwalk. So I, I, 
I do think we're in a good spot with the savings and I, I like the idea of phasing it as well. So Roger, would the, would the right process for that be um, to engage, engage an HVAC engineer to design a specification so that we know what the long-term plan is and then can possibly phase the implementation of it? Meaning if there is a, for lack of a better term, if there is a, a head system that needs to be done first, do we do that and then we can do the pieces down the road with time or is that the right process that you would recommend for us having this plan developed? Yeah, I would agree with that definitely. Um, it also just was in, ensure everything that we have there that's the, the original design of the building is, is up to specification as well. And it allow us to see how we wanna grow and adapt to the building. So definitely, yes. Roger, I'm sorry to keep asking you questions, but is that is that a, a $5,000 thing to hire an engineer? Is that a 25,000, 100,000? I mean, give us an order of magnitude for what it would cost to, to, to do that design work. If, to put a number at it now with a design as a specification going off of the roof design and specification, I would say that if you needed a number now, it's around a twenty to $25,000 design and specification, reaching out to an engineer, getting the blueprints to go out to bid with and having the design. Thank you, Roger. So is that, so Mr. O'Keefe and Madam Chairwoman, is that something the board would be interested in us investing in sooner than later to, to develop that design? So I can speak for myself. Um, you know, we're getting $60 a year in interest on 261,000, almost $311,000. And so when we take a look at the cost benefit analysis of these things getting more expensive year in, year out, I would like to go ahead and use the savings that we're getting for the roof, apply it to a meaningful project, i.e. the ventilation system, uh, getting that stuff in motion and moving forward so the community can actually see the benefits of, of their long-term savings. I agree with that. I, I, from my perspective, I think that the, that our long-term maintenance plan is on point. I'm really excited about the work that uh, that Roger has been doing at that, you know, Adam put in place a few years ago, got that ball rolling, but certainly Roger, you've stepped up our game and um, you know, I would be fully on board with making sure that, that, you know, you've got the right things in place to be able to give us an adequate projection for what that, that project is going to look like. I think the community would appreciate that in the same vein that you've done for, for the roof project. I, you know, I, I would say do the job the way that you know how to do it because you're doing a good one. And uh, and that way, you know, we'll be able to present something to the board and to the community that we can decide what, you know, what makes the most sense. But I, I would be on board with that. Um, other board members, I'm looking to you also for comment. Sounds like a good plan to me. I would be on board also. Thank you, Mr. Eckhoff, Mr. St. Dennis, your thoughts? Yeah, I'll jump in. I, I agree with Steve and, and everybody else's comments about moving forward with other projects and getting the ball rolling. My only thought is if we get a blueprint project plan that we can do it in stages, um, at some point, can we pull up the playground part and, and kind of stagger how we go about doing, you know, duck work and then a little bit of playground. So the, the kids, the kids can get some benefit out of our spending too, or, or do we just go hundred percent all in on on building until that's done and then attack the playground. I don't know, but I, I, I agree. It's only gonna get more expensive. Well, I, I hear you, Mr. Eckhoff. Um, one of the reasons why I would I would definitely support that uh, that HVAC is that I know that as part of the, the COVID plan and COVID protocol, that HVAC was really important to the staff. And certainly, um, you know, our nurses were emphasizing how very important, it, you know, uh, the quality HVAC is. So that to me would, would absolutely be the, the right first move. I love thinking about the kids with the playground too. So, I mean, if there's something we can do on the horizon with that, I, I think that's that's also a good thing to take a look at. But I agree with you. Mr. St. Dennis. Well, my wife will be the first to, to tell you all I am not good with finances. So um, all of the above. <laughs> Mr. O'Keefe. <laughs> One very last comment for me on this topic, I, I, I promise. Um, there's also COVID reimbursement and funding for projects like this, specifically that came out in the last uh, package that uh, was passed back in December. So if there's a way that we can have Roger or maybe the finance department research that any of these 
uh, these changes that if we could potentially implement specifically with the savings from the roof um, this year that we can seek reimbursement, we can sort of double our, uh, our abilities to, to, to make meaningful change. That's a great point. I know also, um, you know, partnership with with playgrounds. There have been some. Uh, there's been some like, uh, you know, companies that do experiential education that uh, you know can offer grants for uh, for playground equip equipment. I know that the PTA in the past um, was a good partner for um, adding some playground equipment. So I think from the playground perspective, that would be something to look at as well. Uh, you know, partnerships in that area, but uh, looking at those projects. And getting the ball rolling with those, Roger, we're giving you a lot on your plate. Good luck. <laughs> Godspeed. Um, big tasks ahead. Uh, we're looking at all the, all the things. So thank you very much for the hard work that you do in advance. Because we're giving it all to you right now. Look at it all. Um, board members, any other comment on um, a consent agenda item number five, which is the Capital Reserve Trust Funds or the facilities update? Okay, so seeing no further discussion, I would accept a motion to accept consent agenda items number five and seven. Mr. O'Keefe. So I'd like to make a motion that we accept consent agenda item number five and accept consent agenda number seven uh, and approve the bid request for, was it A1? Already moved down, my apologies. Um, uh, Ridge Runner Construction. Uh, for the proposal amount of $210,152 for roof replacement, and then start the process uh, to research enhancements in fiscal year 2021 uh, for our HVAC system as well and seek grants. And begin to put feelers out for playground stuff as well. And, oh, and forget, I can't forget about that. And then begin to put feelers out for playground equipment. Thank you, Mr. O'Keefe. Do we have a second for that motion? Mr. Eckhoff, okay. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, let's take a roll call vote. Mr. Eckhoff? Eckhoff, yes. Mr. St. Dennis? St. Dennis, yes. Mr. O'Keefe? O'Keefe, yes. Mrs. Hinckley? Hinckley, yes. And Lawrence, yes. Thank you so much. And uh, Roger, thanks very much for the hard work. And Mr. Steele, thank you very much for your hard work as well. Mr. Steele, hand raise. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure the board saw in the update Roger provided that we provided two updates, one about the underground storage tank repairs, which I think was about $16,000, and then we're buying a new mower as well. And I just wanted the board to have a chance to ask questions about either of those before we move forward. What is our unassigned uh, fund balance so far this year? And what's the expected amount that we may potentially have or forecasting? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that information with me uh, right now. Okay. I do expect it to be a fairly healthy unassigned fund balance, mostly because of all the COVID funding we're receiving. Uh, okay. I, I have no questions about those. I'm pretty comfortable with them. Yeah, I don't have any questions about them either. I saw them in the packet last time and it seems reasonable. Anyone else have any questions on those? No? Roger, was there anything notable on those that you wanted to bring to the board's attention? No, I'm happy with no questions. Um, <laughs> just the, as far as the underground storage tank, since all the little details is we, we did look into both options. Um, both options were, could we see if the boilers could actually pull directly from the tank? Um, the existing um, boiler pumps and heads, they were just right on the borderline of doing it. Um, we're trying to pull a hundred feet from 10 feet underground and we just weren't able to do it. And if we were able to, both boilers would have to be running at the same time, which typically doesn't happen. And we also have an oil fed water heater there. So as far as the underground storage tank, it just came down to the large pipe system ended up being our only option. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, I did just want to take a moment um, because Dr. Sarkdi's principal's report is always so wonderful and I wanted to thank you for that. I know it's part of our consent agenda, um, you know, items, but I, I think that it's it's definitely worth calling out, um, you know, all the wonderful work that's happening in our village school, um, the collaboration that I see, um, you know, there, there are so many things that you called to light in this one that uh, it would be hard to pick one thing out, but 
you know, what, what I love is the overwhelming sentiment of collaboration, of community, um, you know, seeing all of the, all the great work that kids are doing gets me excited about what's happening in the building. Um, and so if that's, you know, if that's what's going on there, it's being, uh, it's being brought forth in your report. And I, for one, appreciate that. So if anyone didn't have a chance to look at it, definitely do. Um, you know, if you're catching this as a replay, read the report, because it's really cool, the stuff that's happening in our school. And our teachers and staff are doing wonderful things. The students seem like, like they're doing amazing things. Um, so check it out, because cool stuff is happening here. And great people are working for us. And, uh, and I am very excited about that. So thank you for that. Thank you, Seth. Um, and I do want to make a, a little shout out that um, our principal got a wonderful shout out on social media, which we don't always see, but that um, in case you didn't know, she delivered books to um, some of our remote learners and um, and got big kudos in our community for that. So that doesn't go unnoticed. And that, you know, that's not something that every educator would do. And, and I, for one, want to say thank you for that, for your commitment to our kids, um, that community members notice that and see that. And the kids were excited about that. So thank you for taking the extra step and doing that. Um, it's pretty cool. So thank you. Thank you. I, I just have to say that's the fun part of my job. If I can log on to Zoom and I can talk about World War II or the Titanic or whatever it is that kids want to read about, that's the best part of my job. So thank you. Okay, friends, um, it looks like we are up to the official public comment time two of two. So I just want to pop that back in since I went rogue before and added an extra one. I'm just going to take a look and see if any of our attendees wanted to um, make a public comment. If you do, you have the opportunity to do so now. Um, you would just use the raise your hand feature and then we would recognize you to speak to the board. And I'm not seeing any hands raised. I wanna thank the members of the public for joining us for sure. We appreciate your partnership and your participation. Thank you very much. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is that we did move the deliberative time. So uh, just putting it into the record again that the deliberative session will be on May 5th with voting day on June 8th and the town meeting on June 12th, just to put those dates out there for any community members who, uh, who may be listening in. Uh, that's available. Um, also, the other dates for the other uh, schools in the district are available on the SAU website, so that's there too. Superintendent Steele, do we have need for a non-public session this evening? No, Madam Chair, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, board members, was there anything else that uh, you had for discussion this evening that we missed? No. I would like to congratulate Sarah and Mr. Eckhoff of uh, your temporary appointment to the board between the months of uh, March and June. So welcome, guys. I'm excited about that. Thanks and uh, I wish you the best of luck in, in the election. I know the competition is, is pretty tough this year. So uh, um, yeah. I, I, I have yeah. a strong suspicion you'll prevail. <laughs> Stiff competition this year, I know. Thanks for keeping us around for another couple months. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm just happy the ballot will be full this year. That's a good thing. Yeah, it is really good. So I'm just going to look to the uh, other administrators that are on the call with us. Does anyone else have anything that you wanted to chime in? Meg, thanks for joining us. Christine, thank you for joining us. Uh, Pete is asking, does anyone need the solar email resent? I don't. I'm good. I don't think so. I think we're good, but thank you. Okay. Um, it looks like we have made it through our agenda. Thank you again for joining for another exciting Mount Vernon Village School Board meeting. Um, appreciate your time and talent um, and, and all of the great discussion. Uh, certainly exciting stuff happening here. And, uh, and just thank you. It's good to see you all. Um, so I will take a motion to adjourn the meeting at 7-11. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Eckhoff. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Hinckley. Any discussion on adjournment? Seeing none, let's take a roll call. Mr. Eckhoff. Eckhoff, yes. Mr. St. Dennis. St. Dennis, yes. Mr. O'Keefe. O'Keefe, yes. And Mrs. Hinckley. Hinckley, yes. And Lawrence, yes. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great night. See you soon.
Thanks, guys.